Hello everybody, welcome to our webinar today. We are going to talk about fear planning, overcoming trading and investing fears. My name is Merlin Rothfeld on behalf of Online Trading Academy and OT Academy. Very happy to be with here, be with here, here today. Got to get my tongue untangled first. First off, let's get started with a disclaimer before we dive into the good stuff of how we can try to repair some of these issues that you may be having, not just with trading, but your overall life. Here's our disclaimer. I am not a clinical psychologist by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I have overcome a lot of these issues, had a lot of challenges with regards to fear. So um, this is our quick little disclaimer I want you guys to read through. And now let's get to the good stuff. So I think what we want to start off with is understanding that we need to change our perspectives and understand that we have to change the way that we've been taught. We've been taught since we we're little kids. You can be anything that you want to be. Set your goal and achieve that goal. Well, that's a great way of looking at things, right? We set our goal. We say, okay, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a doctor. Okay, if a kid wants to be a superhero, well, maybe he can be a fireman or a doctor too. But um, what we do know is that along the way, obstacles pop up. And most of these obstacles are rather simple to overcome. It may be, uh, you know, you have a business partner that's not working well with, or you struggle with some schooling, so you get some mentoring. Uh, there's other issues that come up which are like brick walls. And yes, apologize for my wonderful graphics here. I just couldn't draw a better brick wall. Um, but these are obstacles that at a certain point, we might actually look at and go, you know what? I'm not, I'm just, I'm, I'm not gonna get around that one. Forget it. I'm not gonna achieve my goals. So instead of uh, establishing our goals and striving to just achieve the goal, I think it's also important, maybe even more important, to address the fear, that obstacle that we know is going to stop us. Um, for example, when I got started in trading, I obviously wanted to make a ton of money as a trader. Well, one of the obstacles that I kept coming across with was I was losing a lot of money. So instead of me focusing on making a lot of money as a trader, I focused on not losing it. And that's when things started to turn around. So at the end of this, I'm going to go into trading and investing fears, but I want to start off kind of higher level and work through some of the major, I guess, fears that people have out there. So let's walk through some of them. And for many of you, this, this is what it might look like. You feel like this hammer is just smashing you down with regards to these fears. And there are tons of them, all kinds of different names. You always got um, public speaking, you've got claustrophobia, heights, sharks, spiders, needles, driving, flying. I mean, I'm sure many of you watching right now have some fear. You feel free to type it in the chat too. We'll be monitoring the chats. So if you have questions, comments, suggestions, uh, you know, interact with us here today. But some of you probably have these. I know that I recently just overcame my fear of needles. How did I overcome the fear of needles? Well, it had to do with emergency room visit, being stuck with needles, and you finally go, it really wasn't that bad. Uh, the last one on this list here is trading. And we'll wrap up today going through an example of establishing fears uh, and planning to overcome those fears, steps that we can take to, to get past those obstacles. And ultimately, what we want to do is instead of being crushed by that hammer of fear and kind of oppressed by it, we swing it and we break through those fears and uh, achieve new things. It's, it's interesting when we start to look at what causes fear. Where does it originate? So let's talk about what causes fear. Well, there's this little tiny thing in your, it's called your amygdala, which um, is a very tiny little organ in your brain that basically keeps track of fear. It builds fears. They call it the fear gland. So it'll, it can be the most detrimental piece because it can misfire. Things could be stored in there that might be um, unnecessary fears, built up fears because of things you might have heard, things you may have seen. There could be irrational fears, and there could be some very real fears in there as well. So... In my experience, I broke it down into kind of two categories of fear. There is fear avoidance. And fear of what we mean by fear avoidance is you are taught at a young age, don't touch that pot on the stove, don't grab that handle, it's going to burn you. And maybe you did grab it and it burned you, and now you are avoiding touching hot pots on the stove because you don't want to get burned. That's, that's a normal one. It's a conditioning action that says, you know, this has happened to me before, therefore I'm, I'm just going to kind of avoid that situation. Not that I get really uh, overly nervous, not that my palms start sweating or I get to kind of panic attacks, but it's just, I'm just going to avoid that situation. So we have fear avoidance. Second one is a bit different. This is fear anxiety. This is where we become immobilized, paralyzed, kind of start shaking, sweating palms, etc. Um, that's fear anxiety, which is a bit more challenging to overcome. So let's look at steps on how to overcome this fear, okay? And, uh, by the way, since we had that last image up there, I thought it might be interesting to note that there, I read a study, a report, about a, a university that did a test on rats, and they removed the amygdala. They brought a little wire in there, and they removed the amygdala, and these rats 
feared nothing. They were attacking cats. They were just having no problem with anything out there, fearless. And then I don't think we can surgically have ours removed yet. I don't know if that's part of the process, but uh, kind of interesting that that is your fear center. All right, so let's look at how do we overcome these fears. And at this point, I'm talking very high level, okay? We're not going into specifics yet, but we will give you some good examples as we progress. Step number one is let's just analyze the facts. Let's look at the data. Is your fear founded with any sort of statistical probability? Number two, let's define your fear. Write it down. I want to have a physical document that says, here is what I'm afraid of. And, you know, it'll help you realize that this is the fear. And then we can move on, which goes to steps to prevent. What can we do to prevent that fear from happening? And finally, we're going to go and look at actions to repair it if it does happen. Because most likely your fear is not going to come true. Your brain has built this fear, maybe irrationally, maybe it's again because of something you read or have seen, but we have to identify it, map it out, and see if it is true in fact. So let's go through uh, a basic example. Here is a shark. This is a shark fear. It's called salashophobia. And salashophobia is essentially the fear of sharks. Now, we can all thank a wonderful movie that came out in, the, I believe it was the 70s, called Jaws, which created a totally irrational fear about sharks. So, let's analyze the data on salashophobia. Is this, should you have fear of sharks? Let's say you wanted to be, your goal was to be a scuba diver. You just love scuba diving, okay? So you go out, say, I want to be a scuba diver, but I'm afraid I'm going to get attacked by sharks. No, I'm going to get killed by sharks. Well, let's analyze the facts. Let's look at some simple data. Shark attacks in 2017, this is for the entire world, 88 shark attacks. There were five shark deaths in 2017. Now, if we take into consideration the global population of 7.6 billion people, that means that your odds of being attacked by a shark are 1 in 86 million. So if you fear being attacked by a shark, you may as well fear winning the lottery because it's pretty darn close to the same odds. If you uh, are fearful of being killed by a shark, you're talking 1 in 1.52 billion people a year die from a shark. To put it in perspective, your odds of being struck by lightning are 1 in 700,000. Now, to really establish how irrational the fear of sharks is, let's go and look at car accidents. Now, this is just U.S. stats, so I'm not using global, I'm just using U.S. You have 2.44 million injuries in 2017, and again, this is just for reference. I had to jump years here because it's not very consistent data from the uh, safety departments. But in 2016, we had 37,461 deaths from car accidents. Now, just keep in mind, there were five shark attack deaths and 37,461 car deaths in the U.S. alone. Now, if you take the U.S. population of 325 million, that means that your odds of being injured in a car accident are 1 in 133 you know how many times I go to the beach a year? I'm probably going to the beach 50 times a year. So once every three years, I'm going to be injured in a car accident going to the beach to overcome my fear of sharks. This is an irrational fear, salashophobia. If you're worried about being killed, you have a 1 in 8,000 chance. I mean, these are horrible odds. So you should have a deathly fear of cars if you actually went by the facts. So those of you who fear sharks, it's not that big a deal. And we could walk through steps of how to prevent that. But I wanted to go through a fear to start out that's just irrational, okay? Fear of shark. Now, if you're a professional surfer and you're sur surfing in South Africa where there is a high propensity of great white sharks, that might increase your odds. Um, and we can do things to prevent it. Find areas where there isn't a uh, known shark attacks or not a lot of shark attacks. There are certain areas that are better for that. So let's go further to a more rational fear, which a lot of people have. This is cynophobia or cynophobia, which is the fear of dogs. So I'm going to do a little example. We'll, we'll walk through that kind of four-step process. Analyzing the data, yes, dogs do bite people. I'm sure there's, I couldn't find stats on it, but I'm sure there are a lot of dog bites every year. So let's say your fear, once you define it, is I'm petrified of dogs. I was bitten as a child, and I cannot be around dogs. And of course, if I was around this dog here, I might be a little intimidated too. So what could we do to prevent the fear? And what you, what you want to do is if you have a fear, and again, I'm going through the dog example here, but if you have a fear, write out these three things. Write out your fear. What is it? What are you absolutely worried about? What can we do to prevent it? So if you had an overwhelming fear of dogs, you were bitten by them as a child, as I was. I have ripped my nose uh, here from a Pomeranian. Still don't like Pomeranians, but I love dogs now. So what can we do? Step number one, look, just understand the basics of being around a dog. 
Rule number one, you don't ever approach a dog while they're eating. That's their food. So, you know, you're going to increase your odds of being bitten if you mess with a dog while they're eating. So, let's just not mess with them while they're eating. That will uh, alleviate a lot of the probability of you being bitten. Always approach a dog with your hand out and slowly, right? You, you'd never startle a dog or shock them. So, just kind of go up slow and be nice. And if you really want talking to baby voice, I think they love that. Dude, you got me a booby. All right, next one is never startle a dog. Um, I actually go to the dog park every day with my dog, which is this one on the screen, and there is a, a white husky, like a sandy salt and pepper husky, and when you, if you touch her from behind and she's not, she can't see you, she will whip around and bite you. She's bitten a dozen people at the dog park, so that now she actually wears uh, a little say, um, service vest that says, do not pet. Now, the dog is one of the sweetest dogs. If it comes right up to you and sees your hand, it will lick it. It's super friendly, but it gets startled super easy and will bite. So don't startle the dog, all right? Make sure they see you come in, be nice to them. That's ways that we can prevent. These are very simple things, okay? The next step here is, what if it did bite you? What if that dog bit you and your fears came true? What could you do to fix that problem uh, of your now even stronger fear of it? Well, I would say step number one would be to educate, educate yourself on why dogs bite. There are a ton of different things that trigger it. Now, of course, in the uh, prevent section, we went over a couple of those. But here's one way to get yourself past a fear of dogs. Spend time with a puppy. I actually watched a great video where they took a whole bunch of people who were afraid of dogs, they put them in a room, and they brought in like 30 puppies. You can't be afraid of dogs if you're around a bunch of puppies. Look at this old guy. I mean, y your fear will just evaporate. Now, you can also profile dogs. You can tell if there's some vicious, mean dogs and you want to stay away from those. What else can we do? Spend time at a dog park. Start hanging around them more and realize that most dogs aren't going to bite you. Most are very friendly, nice dogs. You can also find a friend who has a dog. I have used my dog to help people get over their fear of dogs uh, because I know that my dog's not going to bite them. And so you teach them the right way to act around it and then we can overcome that fear. So, here is where it starts to become a bit personal and analytical for each individual person. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, now that we have established what that fear is, we've looked at ways to prevent it, we've also looked at ways that if that fear came true, how could I fix it, let's do a risk reward. And we would do this on every trade that we make as traders and investors. We always do risk reward analysis. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate inaction versus action? Meaning, how would I rate uh, succumbing to my fear or overcoming it? So I would rate, for me, in action, a one. Why? If I have a fear of dogs, I see dogs every day. They're walking down the street, my neighbors have dogs, so I'm gonna be living in this constant state of fear. So inaction to me just doesn't make sense. I would, it's not solving anything, and it will continue to have me uncomfortable and living in fear. So I would rate in action of, of not dealing with my fear of dogs as one. It's, it's really going to make my life worse by not overcoming this fear. I would rate the action side of this very high, seven. I get the companionship of a dog. I can now be maybe more friends with my neighbors who all have dogs. Uh, and I won't feel that apprehension every time I see one. And I realize that they're actually great animals. Now, yes, there are some bad ones out there. But to me, uh, the, the good far outweigh the bad. So in action here, I would put it at a seven. Okay. So let's go to the topic du jour which is trading and investing. Now, we ran a poll on Twitter, and we really put four different things in there. It says, what causes you to have trading and investing fears? Now, 26% of the people that responded said they just don't know where to start, which, okay, that's, that's definitely a, a good fear. Number two on there was afraid of losing money, and that was the winner. 65% said that they were afraid of losing money. Uh, number 9% nine, 9 said not good with computers and... 0% said not sure what I'm risking. Okay, good. So what I wanted to do is we want to run this poll and go through what was the number one out there. So afraid of losing money. So let's go through this one because I think most of you or just about everybody has that fear of losing money as traders. So let's say that your fear is that you are afraid that you're going to lose your money while trading. Now if we go back to the four steps I talked about earlier. Step number one is analyzing the data. Now is this an irrational fear or would you say this is a rational fear? I would say this is a very rational fear. If you approach trading without an education, without an understanding of what it involves, what it entails, you're probably going to lose your money, period. Um, I've seen far too many people get into this that don't take the time to learn how it works, the mechanics, execution, things like that, 
and they just disappear and then they badmouth trading because it's just gambling because they didn't know what they were doing. So it's a rational fear right away. Yes, there is that risk. So let's go to the next step, which is what can we do to prevent that fear? What can we do to prevent losing money in the markets? And this list is rather long. I know many of you that are watching this right now are online trading academy graduates. Some of you might not be, but really let's start with some of the basics. Number one, Learn trading strategies. Learn your tactics of attack that you're going to use when you enter in the financial arena. A soldier doesn't go into battle and just say, well, I don't know what we're going to do today. Oh, I'm in a knife fight? Sweet, I've got an AR-15. No, you need a knife. You know, get the right tools for the right moment. And this is where a lot of traders fail is they don't have a strategy. They've read some book on moving average tactics, which doesn't work. It actually does. It works in one type of market. But as a trader, I need to know a variety of different tactics and strategies to work in different kinds of market. And more importantly, I need to identify what those market environments are. Are we bullish? Are we bearish? Are we sideways? We have lots of volatility. Learn strategies for each of those. Now, it may seem like I rambled off a lot of things there, but once you immerse yourself in the business of trading, those are all commonplace. Number two, create a trading plan. I love this one. This was probably the biggest factor to my success as a trader was mapping out a trading plan. And there's an old phrase that says, if you don't know where you're going, any path will take you there. And at the beginning, I was just shooting from the hip, making all kinds of random trades until my mentor, I'm going to say forced me to write out my trading plan. In that trading plan, you know, we talk about a lot of different stuff. You're identifying your strategies. You're talking about your risk management. You're talking about what time of day you trade, what securities you trade the best. It really is a business plan for you. And if we look at getting a loan from a business for, or from a bank, for example, um, if you are getting a loan from a bank, they are not going to give it to you if you have a, don't have a business plan. And I mean a business loan. Why? Because they're loaning you money if you don't have a plan to with that money, they're not going to give it to you. Why would they do it? It's risk to them. So why would you get involved with trading if you didn't have a plan of how you're going to achieve your goals, right? Entering into the goal setting phase we started off with the beginning, if your goal is to make a lot of money, that's great. But how are you going to get there? You need a plan in place. So if you're trading right now or investing and you don't have a plan, your plan is to uh, rely on your advisor or just make trades as you see them called on TV, then your risk of losing money, your fear of losing money is valid and will probably come true. Get a plan in place. That's one of the ways that we can prevent that fear from happening, that fear of losing money. Next one is going to be getting a mentor or coach. This one can be challenging because there's a lot of false profits out there that we see in the media. Um, one of the great things about Online Trading Academy is the instructors actually have to send in their trading statements. So they are tracked and we can see that they are successful, therefore you know that your coach is doing this for a living and doing it successfully. So that's really important. And, and the coach's role is just like it would be in track or in golf, is saying, look, your swing's a little off, you need to fix this, lift your elbow more when you swing the bat. You know, there's, there's steps that we can take to improve execution, analysis, uh, implementation of strategies, but if you're doing it on your own, you're at home watching TV and you go, oh, I'm just gonna change this, how do you know if you're doing it right? How do you know what the step that you're correcting is the proper thing to do? It might be something completely different that you haven't paid attention to. That's where mentors or coaches come in. And my trading world changed in 1998 and 1999 uh, when I had a mentor really helping me out. Next one, to prevent losses, don't trade real money. Practice in a simulated environment. And a lot of the platforms out there now have simulators that you can go and you can practice on, get more comfortable with it till you feel that not only do you understand the trading platform, because that's a whole nother ball game, but you understand your strategy now. You can access, you can implement that strategy comfortably without feeling uh, nervous and anxious about it, right? When you get to the point that you're a professional trader, it's actually boring because there is no real anxiety, no real emotion. You go, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do and I'll do it. Most novices panic and freak out a little bit. So practice, practice, practice till you get to the point where you don't make mistakes, you're very comfortable doing what you're supposed to be doing, and you know what you're doing. Next one is going to be implementing tools to increase success. Now there's a lot of different things that we can do here to implement or to increase success. A lot of people like to rely on things like technical indicators. We don't really focus on the technical indicator side because they're mainly lagging. What we do is we have market screeners, right? So we'll look at, we have a market screener that basically scans the market for specific criteria that fits within our trading strategy. So if you go to 
uh, the screener section at my OTA, you'll see you can run through there and it'll bring up different trades to fit different objectives, whether it's short-term trading, intermediate, long-term trading. We also have things like odds enhancers, which is basically a checklist. So when we analyze a trade, we run through this list of checklist items and say, okay, does it meet this one? Yes. Does it meet this one? No. Run through and you can actually grade those and ultimately it spits out a score at the end. If you got a really high score, you've got a very high probability trade. If it's a low score, don't take the trade because you're probably going to lose money. That is a simple, uh, going back to attacking our fear, let's use these types of things to overcome them. You also have risk management, right? Most people don't pay attention to how much money they're going to lose or risk per trade. What I have found personally is over the years, most people who start out are taking the most risk that they humanly can because they just want to get rich quick. Trading is not a get rich quick plan. It's a get rich slow plan, if anything. All right, so that's the preventative side. Now, what happens if you did lose money, right? So you lost some money out there and you're feeling even more frustrated because your fear has now come to fruition. What do you do? Well, number one is retake your classes. Stop trading, okay? And what I would do is say, let's say you start off with a $10,000 account. Well, make it, make it better. We'll go with a $50,000 account. And you lost yourself $10,000, so you're down 20%. Stop trading for a little bit. Regroup, retake the class. And if you're an online trading academy graduate, most of our classes offer a free retake as many times as you want on a space available basis. So uh, you can retake those classes and I would encourage you to take them with different instructors. Why? Because every instructor has the same foundation of discipline, risk management, and money management, which is probably why you're losing, but then they also bring in their stories, their experiences, and that to me is where the tire meets the road, and you learn from each one of these different instructors. Right now, Online Trading Academy is over 100 instructors out there to teach you how to do this correctly, so retake those classes once you've taken them. It's not like a one time and done like your college classes. All right, next step on how to fix these issues if you do lose money is simple. And I have noticed that most people do not do this. Evaluate what caused the losses. I went back to my trading early on. Well, I'll say early on. It was probably two years into my trading when I realized I was still struggling. And I said, let me just map out what's causing me to lose. Because the essence of this is the goal was to make money. But the only thing that really mattered was losing. And if I don't lose money, making just becomes a byproduct of not losing it. So what are some of the things that could cause it? Well, these are the three major ones that I noticed with my trading. Now, all of you will be different, but of course you have to trade first and get some experience under your belt before you really figure out what is causing your losses. For me, number one was running stops. What do we mean by running stops? Running stops is basically saying you had a stop loss in place. and Let's say you're willing to lose 50 cents per share. Like, okay, 50 cents, that's, that's, that's perfect. I know I've done all my analysis, it looks good. Stock drops 50 cents. And you're like, oh, I should get out right now. You got your finger on the button. You're like, mm, you know what? I'm going to give it 10 more cents because I just, I feel it right here. It's just, it's inside. I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn around. I've done the analysis. And my buddy over here told me it's going to go up to. Goes to 60 cents. And then you're like, ah, you know what? I'm going to give it to a dollar. I really, I really think that this is going to bounce here. And now it's a dollar down. And basically at a certain point, you just go, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to let this thing go. I know it's going to come back. I've done the analysis. You know why this doesn't work? Because it doesn't. <laughs> I actually had a stock years ago called Excess Communications where I did the exact same thing on. I bought it at $80 a share. I can probably pull up trade records out there if you don't believe me. $80 a share on Exodus Communications, EXDS. Yes, it no longer exists. I wrote it all the way into bankruptcy and I still own 100 shares from $80 a share. Who's the idiot? This guy. Why? Because I let that stop run. I should have gotten out at, let's say, $75, taking $5 loss per share. Nope. Could have got it at 60, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Didn't get out at any of those points. I let my stops run. And therefore, my fear of losing came to fruition because I let my stops run and didn't have money management plan in place. Another one's overuse of leverage. Uh, we've seen regulators crack down on Forex trading in the U.S. because some brokers are giving you over 500 to 1. Now they've dropped it to 50. You can still get 500 to 1 internationally, but not in the U.S. Margin is borrowed money. You put up $1 of your own, and let's say it's 50 to 1 margin, you can now trade $50 worth. That's crazy for people who don't understand how to trade or how margin works. It's very dangerous. And what we have to remember is part of your brain is saying, I have 50 to 1 margin or 4 to 1 margin or 2 to 1, whatever it is. Your brain is saying, I can make money 50 times faster. Really? That means you can also lose 50 times faster. And if you're a novice starting out, odds are you're going to lose. If you don't have a plan, don't have a strategy, don't understand how to trade, you're going to lose. I'll put my money on it. So get all those pieces in place and prevent that fear of losing money from happening. 
The other one's trading too big, right? You start off with a small account, let's say $10,000, like, okay, I'm going to trade 100 shares. Well, common mistake a lot of traders make is they will go right, rush into maxing out. I'm going to trade full bore, full margin, as much as I can. Well, you don't know how to trade yet. You haven't handled 100 shares. What makes you think you're going to handle 1,000 or 10,000 shares? They're very different as far as execution, slippage, and other factors. So be careful out there. Trade within your comfort zone. I would say, like I mentioned earlier, start paper trading on a simulator and then work up to a small amount of shares and then get bigger as you get more comfortable and therefore you'll appease that fear of losing money. Number one, another one we can do is revise our trading plan. Now this is where coaches and mentors come in handy because you really need to understand what mistakes you are making and if you're losing money, it's probably because you don't know what mistakes you are making. So again, this kind of revising your trading plan and working with coaches and mentors are kind of hand in hand here. Coaches and mentors will help you fix what is wrong and make the adjustments necessary so that you stop losing money. So let's look at a couple questions. And I'm going to answer these from my perspective. I'd love it if you guys answered those from yours, but here's my answers. If I gave into this fear of losing money as a trader and I avoided trading, what would it cost me? Well, number one, it's going to cost me additional income streams, right? I know a lot of people are using uh, trading as a means to generate extra income streams, whether you're selling options. Others might be looking for that financial freedom where they can say, you know what? Take this job and shove it. Well, if you don't, you are going to be keeping that current job that you have. Uh, and you might not get to that level of financial freedom unless your current job offers you that, which is great if it does. Another thing is, it may prevent you from living the life that you want. Now, I have friends who trade and travel, and that's their whole goal. They want to travel around the world. They love trading, so they do this while they travel. And most of us that have the nine to five jobs, you can't do that. You get your, what, two, three weeks of vacation a year, that's your time to travel? Well, I know people are doing it nine months a year traveling around the world and trading and enjoying life. So that's one set of lifestyles. Others may have a completely different set of goals and objectives to use with their trading lifestyle or trading money, um, but really it's allowing you to live the life that you want as opposed to uh, working for the man in your nine to five. Next question is, what are the benefits of avoiding this fear? So if I avoid trading because I'm afraid of losing money, what do I gain from that? Well, number one, I've got no risk to my money, so my money is safe. If I stay out of the financial markets, then there's going to be no attack on my accounts. Okay, great, that's fine. Also, it's less work, right? Trading is work, folks. This is not a get-rich-quick thing, as I mentioned. It's a get-rich-slow. It takes a lot of work. It takes determination. It takes focus. It takes planning and strategy and tactics, just like any military uh, endeavor would entail. So does trading. So if you're not getting involved with it, less work. You also have less stress. Yes, trading can be rather stressful. We can uh, revisit some of our sessions we've done at OT Academy with Dr. Woody Johnson, if you like. But there's a lot of ways we can overcome stress. One of them is to just not trade. Well, to me, that is just not worth the risk or the, the reward. So let's go do a risk-reward analysis here. Now, we do this, again, with every trade we would make. We should do it with a lot of our actions in life as well. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would I, Merlin Rothfeld, rate inaction versus action? Inaction meaning giving into my fear and not trading. You're saying, forget it, I don't want to do it. And action saying, jumping into the arena, taking the steps necessary to learn it and becoming a trader. All right, I would rate inaction as a two. The only benefit that inaction would provide me personally is my money is safe. There's no risk to it. So it's not really, I'm not gaining anything from inaction here. For me personally, I think action is a nine. Why? Because Taking the step, as I did back in 1998, allowed me to open doors I would never have opened. So I now have, a, we'll just say, a different uh, net worth. I have the ability to trade from where I want. I can travel. I have the freedom to take this extra income stream in conjunction with working uh, as a regular job, and I can start to amass assets. I can build my nest egg, my financial future. That's been my goal is to make sure I'm set up financially uh, down the road and also like to travel. Now we'll have to talk to our bosses about some more travel time here soon. Um, but to me, the reward far outweighs the risk in this equation of I'm afraid of losing money. And we've addressed a lot of the reasons why you really shouldn't fear that. Because if you have a plan, if you set all the rules and you have a money management plan, it's really not that big of a factor. Yes, you are going to lose money. Let me just say that right now. You will lose money. Nobody gets involved in trading and doesn't lose. 
It's just part of it. It's like saying, I'm going to buy a car. I'm going to drive down the streets here in South in Los Angeles. And I, I never want to see a red light. I never want to touch a red light. Well, that's not going to happen. You're going to hit them. It's part of it. So in summary here, if you have a fear of losing money as a trader or an investor, long-term or short-term, what can we do? Well, number one, we define the fear and we know what that one is. It's the most popular one from our viewers on Twitter. Well, let's go through the process here of preventing it from happening, of losing money. Um, and I think Warren Buffett said, if you do lose money, lose very little. That's really our approach is saying, let's come up with strategies, tactics, and our core strategy that we teach at Online Trading Academy in particular focuses on exactly that. Everything has a risk to reward ratio. And if you're not comfortable with the amount of money that you're risking on each trade, then you don't take it. But you'll find some that once you've run through the odds enhancers, you've run through all the scanners and filters and applied it to the strategy, you say, you know what? This has a very high probability of working. Therefore, it's, risk, it's worth risking X dollars to make Y dollars. And generally, Y is going to be much, much, much greater than our risk. So uh, learning strategies out there. If you don't know any trading strategies, core strategy at Online Trading Academy is probably the best out there. It's a rule-based structured system that says step-by-step, step, how do we enter set stops and our price targets, uh, create a trading plan. You can also get a mentor or coach. We have an XLT program, stands for Extended Learning Track Program, which is a, I'm going to say daily because we have it for all the different asset classes, program where you're logged in un under the guidance of a professional trader and some coaches in there as well. Uh, with a bunch of other students all sharing suggestions and going over the trading strategy and applying it um, as a collective group. So there's nobody throwing in curveball junk, uh, pump and dump stock recommendations because the crowd would, would get on you about that. It's saying, here's a real trade, let's analyze it. What do we think about this one? And therefore, you start to develop more high probability situations. Next, practice, 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 practice. Nobody walked into a, on a baseball field and swung a bat for the first time and, and hit a home run consistently or got on base consistently. They spend hundreds of hours in batting cages. Tiger Woods used to be one of the best golfers in the world. He is out there practicing all the time when he's not in surgery for his back. Um, you can also go into using tools and resources to help increase your probability. For me, again, the, one of the best is going to be retaking classes, taking the XLTs, but using some of the resources like the scanners, like uh, odds enhancers to really increase the probability of a trade working in our favor. And finally, is just that risk management plan. Get a plan in place. These are some of the most basic pieces, basic steps that you can do to help stack the odds in your favor. And uh, if that fear of losing money is something that is overwhelming to you, well, then let's take action to overcome it. Don't let your fear of losing money prevent you from achieving your goals of being a professional trader or an investor and changing your lifestyle. Because we talk about Online Trading Academy, it's all about your why. Why do you do what you do? For our world, we trade because we all have a certain why that we want to achieve, and we don't want to let a simple obstacle like a fear of losing money stop us. Identify it, prevent it, fix it, overcome it, and achieve your why. Thank you guys for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Take care.